so I'd say we're three minutes in, and um, I think we we're good to um, to kick off. Again, a um, little bit of housekeeping. Um, obviously, this session is recorded. You, I'm pretty sure you have heard the message when you um, joined. And um, the topic of today's session is um, a customer story between Runcast and Oman Airports. And from Oman Airports, um, we've got um, Basim. Um, Alawati and uh, Basim, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Oh yeah. Um, so my name is Basim Alawati. I'm the ICT Technical Senior Manager at Oman Airports. I'm currently leading four teams at Oman Airports, uh, starting with the network, the entire network and data centers, um, the airport system security team. So, which consists of the CCTVs, access control, screening machines. As you visit the airport, you see them. Um, the platform team, which is normally the taking care of the authentication, the email services, file services, all the operating systems from the server side. And last but not least, which is very crucial for Runcast, the virtualization team. Um, in addition to the like the storage, the underlying hardware, the backup. So. That's in a nutshell. It's, it, it, it seems you're very busy. <laughs> Perfect. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Very, right. Yeah. Yeah. I try to use tools to automate them. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a very, very good point. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, um, my name is Marcus Strauss. Um, I'm the head of product management at, at Roomcast. So thank, thank you all for joining. Um, I hope this will be would be an informative session for for everyone. So let me let me stop sharing so that we're not all just looking at a piece of slide deck. Um, Basim, what made you? What brought you to the point of looking for a solution like Rulecast? Um So the story started let me say in 2014 at vm world barcelona while i was walking through the exhibition in fact and uh, i saw a small cute uh, booth of runecast and uh, i got introduced to it because honestly they were not there in the middle east initially so and when they told me and introduced me to runecast from the uh, compliance perspective and even how we can take the vmware best practice guide and get it checked in your environment in just minutes, that was for me a game changer rather than going through each and every document and looking at that. So right. this is where my journey really started the root cause and I asked them for POC because a lot of times, a lot of products are there, they claim big, and but their implementations normally are a bit tough to really get the fruits out of it. So we normally ask for POC, seeing is believing. And when we POC'd it, we really saw the benefit, let me say it. And uh, there were really, we engaged with Runcast to go and be a customer of Runcast. Right. So what, what's your main use case, right? So what, what's the main challenge that you, when you first started looking at Runcast, what's the, the main challenge that you needed to solve um, by using Runcast? Okay. Now, one of the main challenges was mainly the compliance, the best practice, uh, let me see the minimum security baselines and the best practices. And when I got into Runecast, they told me that there are already uh, some benchmarks pre-built within Runecast, like CIS, NIST, STIG, which was for me like, wow, that's great. Mm. And uh, which made it like food food for us is that we could pick and choose what we want to enable from these like they're not enabled all by default so they are you can enable whatever you want in addition to the again vmware best practices the other thing which really like attracted me and made me go ahead with runecast that it shows you your missing patches the vulnerabilities which is available and it provides you a link like right. direct link where you can go and find the solution directly. Yeah, and I mean, I, I would assume this is, um, you know, a lot of time saving just by having the ability to see things there and then rather than having having to go and dig through 
um, a, a virtual mountain of information, quite literally. One hundred percent. You you could not imagine like you know we have a lot of like let me say our our site is quite huge in Oman airports. We have four data centers across Oman. And right. we have a couple of like server rooms as well, which I don't call them the center, so I don't mention them much. So you can imagine how big we are. Okay, we are uh, more than 1,000 plus servers we have here at one yeah. airport. So, you know, automating all that in a few minutes really saves a lot of time for my virtualization and cloud team. Mm. Yeah. It and their life easy. And, you know, it, it makes you avoid mistakes because searching manually you may make a mistake and that's why automations are very in place of course and the the human factor is still always one of the bigger challenges right 100 percent yeah, 100%. yeah and given um you know oman airport's criticality in terms of the infrastructure right i mean you would want to um limit the amount of potential error as much as possible right 100 percent and uh, just to add on top of that like uh, yes the infrastructure is very critical as we are the entry to the country and uh, as the world is you know moved towards virtualization like uh, they are most of the companies are virtualized and we are like uh, not a difference from them we are 95 percent virtualized if not more mm. so you want to really make sure that your environment is really like secured following the best practices, your minimum security baselines are in place. They're getting verified literally every day automatically. So, you know, the amount of time which was saved for our yep. engineers is tremendous. Yeah. Um, so can you describe a little bit and obviously as much as possible um, the the infrastructure or the, the, the VMware products that you um, cover using Roomcast? Um, okay, now this is a bit tricky question, let me say it, <laughs> because we have attendees and yes. I'm sure there are some bad actors or not, but yeah, so of course, like the most basic product, let me say it, vSphere, like uh, again, VMware just depends on that, and uh, I might not mention all the rest of the product we use from VMware, we use quite a, quite uh, quite some product from VMware, where Runecast covers a lot of them, and we get benefit from Runecast on that area as well, but the main one which we'll focus on like is the vSphere, which is the mm. core, which is the heart of VMware. We use mainly the uh, Runecast for that from the VMware right. perspective. Yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, you know, uh, like I said, as much as possible, right? I mean, obviously yeah. we do not want to necessarily describe <laughs> uh, um, all the environments to, um, to that detail, right? Um, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you've, you've touched already a little bit on some of the benefits that um, you and your team gained by using um, Roomcast. But can you tell us, or can you tell the audience a little bit more about some of the other benefits that you, you see by using a solution like Roomcast in your environment? Okay. Um, see, there are a lot of benefits, let me say, it, and uh, for Roomcast that we're getting. It's not only about patching, which I said, not only about minimum security baselines, um, it's also about like we use it heavily when we come to upgrade to the next release of right. firmware. Like the simulation the mechanism available within Runecast to say that today I'm in vSphere 6.7, which is getting end of life anyways very soon. Yep. And you want to jump to vSphere 7, okay? You would like to check your drivers. And that's one of the most important thing, which sometimes if it goes wrong, <laughs> you will literally see a good purple screen. Yeah. And it, which you're, is not good to see. You're in a world of pain if it goes wrong. Exactly. And, you know, and so, it, there's nothing there's nothing more um, I think soul crushing than having to go through pre-staging, staging, testing re-rolling out every update and upgrade again to make sure it, it, it works before you hit production. Obviously, you still need to, you know, have testing in, in place, but um, definitely ha the hardware compatibility and the upgrade planning is is hopefully very helpful with reducing the amount of time it takes 
to do it that. Is, and we need to keep into account, like, you know, since we have such a large environment, we don't have like uh, all the servers from the same brand. So it's a heterogeneous right. environment over time. It becomes yep. heterogeneous. You can't avoid it. So checking for each server type, the driver yep. compatibility is a nightmare. Yep. And having it in a click, it's just as wonderful as, as, can, as you can imagine. <laughs> So um, one of the other things maybe I, that I, I touched upon, but not fully, because like, yes, we use like uh, the minimum safety baseline from CIS stick. The beautiful part that we utilize here now, which is the custom profiles, like we pick and choose right. from each category what is suitable for us. So we can't say just CIS come implemented, that's it, we can't, because you know, not all environments can really implement every little thing written mm. over there and if by not implementing you'll always see that you are in the red corner you are not really fully compliant so having the custom profile in place you see that you are compliant to what you need again that's another thing that we really use from here and you know we have internal compliance teams we have audits on us and uh, you know we utilize runecast uh, to get reports on our environment and to show them that yes we are compliant on the on this on the security standards that are required here at the airport yeah and custom profiles i i i would guess are also a a very good way to just create your internal policies that may not necessarily be regulatory but just internal policy because every every organization generally has their own internal policies aside from regulatory requirements right true True, hundred percent, hundred percent. One, one, one more thing. Let me just touch upon, like, which is extremely good, and uh, maybe we didn't know that that runecast will help us into that, but it really come into very handful. Like uh, when you configure your ESXi to send their logs to runecast and analyzing these logs and providing you some suggestions or providing you like um, potential issues that you have in your infrastructure. Right. That was extremely handful for us because I remember a year back we were into a situation where there was an issue going on and we literally not knowing from where it's coming. So we went to Runecast and we checked it that like the KB they put on log or syslog uh, setting and see what are the applicable KBs here. Right. We were able to pinpoint like uh, where is the issue coming from and then we engaged with that uh, partner and told them that the issue is coming from here, so let's get this resolved. So that's another, again, useful feature, let me say it in uh, Runecast. Well, it's, it's all about reducing the time it takes to get to the root cause of any problem, right? Um, whether that's a security-related problem or whether that's just, you know, misconfigurations or, you know, anything like that. It all, it's all about reducing the time it takes, right? 100%, 100%, you want to be up and running, you know, that, that's the core, like of course. VMware nowadays, yep. this is your core, if it's down, everything that is down. Yep. yep. So, you know, speaking of time and reducing time, you know, roughly, and obviously there is there is no real science um, always to find these numbers, but roughly, what do you think by how much time or how much time has your team and you saved by using Roomcast in your environment? Um, I would say around 65 to 70% of time, especially when right. it comes to the compliance checks and automating the compliance checks and the best practices guide. And just to add on top of that, I would say that um, uh, Runecast makes you avoid downtime as well. It's not only saving the time of your team by doing the routine tasks, but no, it avoids downtime to the environments as it proactively yep. alerts you and makes you, again, you know, when it comes to hard compatibility to choose the right driver itself, that itself yep. is a yep. big, big, big time saving, yep. not only of the engineer, of the environment itself. Yeah, and it, it's always hard to quantify the things that you've proactively stopped from happening in the first place, right? I mean, it's very easy to quantify things that you've saved time on your everyday tasks, but then there is obviously also the element of you don't have to deal with things if they're not happening, right? So there, there is an element to that. And it's it's great. I mean, it's fantastic to hear that you and the team were able to save, you know, 60 to 70%. Um, that's, that's huge, right? I mean, that's in anyone's book, that is a big 
chunk of time of that now can be used otherwise. So w would you would you say that your you and your team can now <clears throat> excuse me can now focus more on business critical things um, rather than just having to be you know more reactive and dealing with with things that happen on a on a day to day basis. Well, definitely, definitely. Like uh, once you automate in any platform, uh, the yep. engineers they have their own time to really think of okay, what's next? Not only the day to day operations. So they too sometimes come to me, guys. We have literally nothing to do today. So <laughs> what we to do? So we started the rotation plans even for for our engineers and the virtualization team, because again. Saving time using with the runecast, some other tools maybe, literally give them enough time for them to think about the, the other stuff that they can do, yeah. what other elements they can think about, what other automation they can do. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it, it's really hard to be innovative when you're flat out busy all the time, right? I mean, innovation oh. requires breathing room and time and, you know, it's really, really hard to do that when you're when you're flat out in the middle of day-to-day -day troubleshooting. So it's fantastic to to hear that. Um, what would you say in terms of the the spread, I guess, between um, <clears throat> generalists and you know subject matter experts? Um, would you would you think that you know more generalists are able to do some of the work that you know before um, might have required subject matter experts? Um, I would say we would still like need the subject matter experts again, because um, uh, you require them when there's a problem. Yeah, you require them to solve the issue when it's there. Having more like generic people or generic engineers, um, again, they might be able to do the normal day to days, but not really to resolve issues. So having subject matter experts still is a requirement, but you might not require to engage third parties, let me say, to assess your environment. Right. Yes, to, uh, with having a room card, because that's an automated task now. Yeah. Now, if, like, you know, I'm sure most of the organizations, they have, like, uh, requirements to assess their, their uh, security posture once a year at least. Again, Runcast does that for you every day literally every day it runs automatically and gives you a report and the report in the morning in your email so you know where you stand yeah. so, uh, <clears throat> on, on on that how important do you think it is for you and the team and for oman airports to kind of move away from this once a year exercise of having to prove that you're you know compliant and you have to prove that your security posture is up to date to something that's much more continuous and it's you can every day prove that you're compliant and you can every day prove that you know your environment is secure how, how important do you think that is even for internally for yourselves and the, and the team it's, it's pretty important uh, marcus like uh, rather than doing a norm you know what used to happen we used to do a traditional let me say security assessments previously but having such things all automated now you can we still do security assessments on a yearly basis but much more focus on specific scenarios right where we think that okay after putting all these layers of security what can be still a gap so we look at those scenarios now, focus there more rather than on a traditional scanning methodologies and the uh, normal automated rest of the tools which check for you missing patches, missing uh, open ports and all that. That has gone. Yeah. That's been all yeah. checked right now, handled automate, automatically. And again, I, I, you know, it follows the same, the same concept which is talked about for um, upgrade, um, for, you know, proactive troubleshooting, it, it allows you to spend time on the things that are most critical and, you know, allows you the time to spend on really ensuring that the environment is, is secure. And I mean, you know, um, and I'm not sure, you know, how much the audience um, knows about that, but the vast majority of existing threats today in today's threat landscape are still based on existing vulnerabilities right um, so it's really it's really important um, I think to be able to take this big chunk of, of work and 
um, automate that to the largest extent possible so that your your team can spend more time on you know things that are much more important and much more critical. And just to add on top of that you know like one of the filters which is again available with then broadcast let me say that we always focus on it like you know it's there's nothing called 100 percent like you not have one about this by time all of it is occur yeah. like do appear patches you appear but we always focus on also something called exploitability there's a filter for that yeah that is like a kpi on the team that it's yeah. always should be green yeah you know so they know where to focus so yeah. that's again a beautiful part uh, which i've seen added yeah. maybe in last one year in runcast on that yeah and it's it, it all comes down to you know and i i keep repeating that point it, cutting through the noise and you know being able to really focus on the things that are most important isn't it right because i mean True. i think we can all say that for all of our jobs right um that we have a lot of things that we could consider noise um and a lot of things that we we must look at but maybe not at the highest level of criticality right and um it's you know i'm, I'm glad to hear that your your team is able to make use of some of these things like the um, known, known exploited vulnerabilities. Yeah, right? for sure. Um, no, it's, it's great, great to hear. Um, like you've had a lot of experience with Runecast now. I mean, to be honest, you've been with with Runecast longer than I have, right? So <laughs> I, 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 I might be able to learn a thing or two from from you. But are there any tips and tricks that you would like to share um, with you know some of the, the the people that are on on the um, on the webinar, or you know someone who's going to watch it later on? Are there anything uh, that you would like to share in terms of how you get the immediate value out of out of Runecast? Well, I would tell them like simply go to the Runecast website, download the OVA, plug it in, assign an IP address, give it to your vCenter, that's it, it's done. Right. It is as simple as that because seeing is believing. Um, no matter how much we talk, okay, um, uh, we say because that's uh, our own story, but to really see it in your environment and see the value that Runcast can bring, I would say download it as a POC, see it, you'll be amazed. You may always think that you have done everything, but there's a big chance that you have missed a lot of things that did not come in front of you. This which will be discovered later on by Runcast. Yeah, and obviously I am biased, right? Um, I, I'm perfectly honest, but um, you know, you and I have been around software for a, a very long time, right? And uh, we've all seen, um, you know, things that are described as easy deployable, um, which still ended up requiring three days and 16 hours of professional services to, to get up and running. Um, and um, I was, one of the things that I really, really appreciate about, about Runcast, and you've touched on it, is the ease of deployability, right? I mean, it's it literally is, it, it is it that is, you download the audio. Five to ten minutes. It depends yeah. on your internet speed. Let me say it. Yeah. How quick you download it because deployment is just few minutes. Yeah. And like I said, I'm I'm biased, but I I really you know having spent um the last fifteen plus years around software and especially in the enterprise space, um yeah it that was a very welcome surprise, right? Even for me and. Uh, I think that's it's it's a great way to make sure that customers get immediate value out of Runcast as quickly as as possible, right? Um, what what do you you know? And uh, I'm putting on the spot a little bit here, but how would you describe Runcast support and you know the way we engage with customers? And I'm I'm always very interested in hearing that, but um, I think so is the rest of the audience likely. Um, okay, you touched upon one of the best points. Let me say, you know, why why me as Boston personally even, I love really Runecast is one of the factors is always support. Like um, after sales support, it's very important for every customer. Literally all the companies will show you the best face when they want to sell you the product. Of course. But after selling the product, <laughs> you, 80%, you'll not see them around. With Runecast, it's, it's just different. Let me say, um, whenever you open a ticket, even though you might not need it, really, you know, rarely we open tickets, but mainly I open tickets for, let me say, enhancement requests, right. okay? Like uh, when I ask for a two-factor authentication, I remember the custom profiles that we have them today, I remember asking them for long. Um, uh, the 
operating system support. Maybe we didn't touch upon it uh, until now because Runcast does scan the underlying operating system like Windows Linux. That was one of the things that we I remember discussed in the uh, the roadmap uh, previously with the uh, Runcast. Let me say technical leads, and I, we saw it that it's already available. So Runcast support is excellent, and what what's best on that that they listen to their customer. I remember even like for the two-factor authentication when I opened an official ticket, when they released the update on the room clients, they sent me a personal email thanking me, dear Mr. Watson, thank you very much for your enhancement request. This is to inform you that your enhancement request has been implemented, just update your appliance and you'll have it there. Right. So that personal touch is so important and that feedback, the two-way communication, which is there, it's extremely important. Mm. Most of the big companies, when you go to them, they'll tell you, okay, yeah, we'll prioritize your requests. We have a list and queue of requests. We'll see the demand on them. And they may not end up happening. But here with Runecast, again, very focused company on a specific product, specific like uh, a journey. So you get your things done. I'm, I'm look I'm obviously I'm I'm very happy to hear that right um and of course we are you know and everyone uses this we're a customer centric company right um and unfortunately using that term has almost lost a little bit of its value because everyone now is using it um but truly uh, we are a very customer focused company we work very closely with our customers we've always done this and you know that that is one of the things that personally I'm, I'm very proud of because i think it's really important and to your point um it helps being focused right so um but that's that's great thank you thank you very much for, um, for that maybe, let me say that it's a value for money mm. like maybe i'm not sure if all the people know their pricings and all that but whoever is listening to us today or be listening on the replay let okay. me say go and ask for it don't be afraid don't think that all this massive product which is doing for you all automations is a very expensive piece of software no it's really value for money for what it's been doing you'd be surprised thanks Beb. again thank you thank you for that um let's move maybe into questions um because we're about half half an hour in um we got about 10 15 minutes left so we got a question um and the the question was what do you have to prepare to make an implementation as easy as possible so we'll we'll answer this live here so um um from your experience when you had to deploy um what were the things that you had to prepare um in order to to deploy broadcast um i would say just an internet connection to that vm and the uh like let's say the reachability cv center right as simple as that of course again if you have other products from vmware like horizon and xt and all the rest just make sure the reachability is there okay on a specific port that's it yep. and an internet connection so you can download the updates online and even if you don't need that there's a manual way of up, like uh, updating the appliance as well so I know there are some very much strictly security agencies. They don't want to keep their appliance connected to the internet. Yeah. So even you can download that uh, like locally and then upload it to the appliance. So that's it. Nothing yeah. So more. so it's really, very, pretty simple. Yeah. So just, really, just try it. <laughs> just really a connection. Um, you know, a way to download the OVA, um, VM to deploy the OVA to, and um, you're good to go, right? Um, that's. That's really and it is really all the size. <laughs> <laughs> so we've we've got another one. It's great. Keep keep the questions coming. Um, how many people are using the platform, and is there any special training needed? So you know, um, in in your case within Oman Airports, how many how many people of your team or across teams are are using Runecast? So. I would say our virtualization team completely uses that, which is around six to seven people we have, and plus our compliance team. Um, in terms of whether you require any training for it, I would say no. It's so simple, extremely simple, straightforward to the point. It's not like, believe me, the old 
let me say the Stone Age products, the right. big giant companies which used to be Stone Age, which they have upgraded, upgraded, upgraded their product just to make it look the way it looks. It's a new platform. It's yeah. simple, straightforward to the point. You don't require training for it. Though. Perfect. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, I, I always have to preface with I'm obviously biased, right? Um, I do work for Roomcast. Um, but, you know, again, having having spent as much time around security and software, it's to your point, I, it it's very straightforward. You log in and you see results and you can immediately start getting value out of that um, without requiring um, long internal or externally provided training. Um, you know, I mentioned professional services earlier on. Um, that I've been I've been around for long enough to know that that's a very standard thing that comes very often with software. You end up having to spend a lot of money on, you know, professional services provided training and deployments and things like that. So I'm I'm really happy to hear that you know this you know completely is not the case um, for, for you and Roomcast. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question. How often do you people check it or how often do you check it? Um, and by that, I mean, uh, I would assume it's Roomcast and how much time does it take? Um, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that means getting, getting value out of, um, out um, of when you check. Okay, how often we check it? It's a daily driver for me. So that's the first thing in the morning, the team checks in terms of our compliance, our patching, the KBs which are there and everything. That's a daily thing in the morning that they have to do. Um, how long will it take? Um, if I understand the question correctly, maybe how long it takes for Runecast to analyze that? It runs at midnight when I'm sleeping. I'm <laughs> coming in the morning, everything's running. Okay. Right. So And again, that doesn't take time. So let me say it like, um, maybe there's also one more thing that we should touch upon. Like, for example, if there is um, uh, whether a KB had been found that uh, you need to apply it, there is an automated remediation right now available in Runecast, which creates scripts for you. Again, right. thank you, Runecast. You saved me. I'm not too good in scripts at all. I'm really <laughs> bad into that. Okay, so you saved my life. Okay, and uh, once you apply it, like you run that script and you want to check whether that got applied or not, you just click on analysis. It takes one to two to three minutes, depending on the size of the like uh, organization that you have in the infrastructure. Like in our case, let me say for the sense and everything, it does not take more than three minutes. Okay, if I run it overall, if I run it only on that specific thing, it runs just for a minute to verify whether that's been applied or not. But yeah, so it, it, again, it it just it makes life so much easier, right? Is the bottom line that I'm, that I'm hearing. The remediation that. Yeah. is just wonderful. I know it's not there for everything, but for a lot yeah. of things, it's just available and they keep on adding, I believe, right? Because I can see more and more remediation science now available yep. for the findings which are there. Yeah, and remediation, and just for, for the audience, remediation um, updates is part of the um, definition updates that go out on a weekly basis, right? So yes, to your point, um, Basim, um, there's always new things that, that come into, into that. So it's, it's great, again, this, it, you know, this is fantastic to hear, to, um, to see that you know, the, the remediation gives you that much benefit, right? And it provides you um, a, a lot of time savings, right? That's and, um, it, yeah, exactly. Yep, I was yep. just about to touch on that, that saves a lot of time. That saves yep. a lot of time because either otherwise you have to do it manually for the GUI, one by one. Yep. If you don't know how to write scripts, then the script made ready for you. Yep. With everything automated. And, and the objects that you want to apply on. I was just yeah. going to say, yeah, I mean, it, it allows you to remove again the human error factor of um, you know, writing along um potentially along URL internally or potentially, you know, IP addresses and VM you know, names, hardware VM, IDs, everything. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it, it avoids again it, it helps reducing the human error. And you can pick and choose where to apply as well. So it, it's not necessarily it'll give you a script which is applying to all like the like the finding with ten VMs to all the ten VMs. You can select yep. one. Yeah. Perfect. We've got another question. Um so let me read that. Um, how many releases per year you see um, would be mandatory to, um, 
you see that it was mandatory to have. And is it easy to upgrade? Um, and uh, I'm having a slight difficulties with the last part of that so question. Do you need support team to do it or it was easy, easy so the try. first one i will leave it to runcast how many releases per year is there so <laughs> yeah let me let me answer that um so there there's several different types of releases right so um we have application releases which are generally once a quarter um and that's the update of the ova itself um and that's usually where feature functionality things like that come into play and then i touched on the definition releases um which is generally once a week, um, and that's new checks, um, updates for existing checks, remediations, things like that. Um, both of these, if there is an internet connectivity, are entirely automated. Um, if not, there's various different ways, um, Basim touched on that earlier on, to make sure that you know um, updates are as painless as, as possible. Right. Um, and I would assume I, if I'm, I'm kind of connecting these um to extend this to do you need a support team to upgrade so Basim, i I'm, I'm gonna let you answer that no uh okay so supporting to upgrade no of course so i just go to sleep come in the morning the appliance is updated <laughs> <laughs> if we have an internet connectivity again yeah. so like we have our appliance connected of course to the runcast website for that there's just a url that you can connect to if again to restrict it again but manually, I haven't tried to upgrade it uh, until now, to be honest. Okay, but uh, it's never need supporting to upgrade such an appliance. No. Perfect. That's that's great. Um, so let's see if we have any more. Um, don't see any questions right now. Um, we have another couple of minutes, so we'll we'll see if maybe we have another question um, coming in. Um, but it, it was it, it's it's great to talk to you, and I, I know obviously um, Basim and I have spoken before, and you know we have uh, we've had a, a few other discussions over over the months. Um, but it's it's great to to get a chance to I guess share some of that experience with um, other customers, or you know potentially just um, um, other people in the industry who really are maybe in the same position you were. Um, when you started looking for a solution like Runecast, right? And just hopefully help um, guide some of the decision making, right? Um, and I'm, I'm really happy to hear um, some of the feedback that you've you've provided. And obviously, you know, I'll make sure we we'll, we we'll pass that feedback along as well. And uh, um, but it's um, it's fantastic to hear that Runecast allows you to save so much um, time. I mean. Between sixty and seventy percent is a lot, right? No, I mean, in, a, a in anyone's product, book. and uh, the the good thing again about it, there are a lot of features getting added every now and then. Okay, like uh, one of the things which was the organization feature, which I was looking for, I didn't request it, but it really helped me since we have airports at multiple locations in Iran. Right. So now what we did every ESXi environment, we categorize into that airport. So the supervisor for that airport, he just focuses on that airport and he sees the state of the security posture and the uh, administrative baseline only for his his airport right. and the other team focusing on their airport and where the manager can see the overall status that's again a good feature which has been added like you know um, a couple of releases back yeah yeah and i guess again it comes comes down to you know with a larger environment it becomes i think important to Kind of group things right into their areas of responsibility because not everyone needs to see everything and be distracted more or less by everything else that's going on in the environment right um oh, one more thing that we didn't touch upon i believe because we are again not a cloud uh, user but yes runcast does support cloud okay. yes it does <laughs> uh, yeah it, does. it supports kubernetes as well so Yep. You know, like again, we're not much using them right now, but yeah, it does support. I didn't try them, but it does support. Yeah, and you know, it's it's interesting because obviously the, I guess the 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 security posture and the requirements for for you as an airport provider um, are obviously very strict, um, and you know, cloud migration and things like that are naturally going to take a little bit more time than in other industries, right? Um, but it's it's great to hear that you you already know about these capabilities within Runcast, 
right? So, it, you know, it gives you that little bit more peace of mind that when you start that journey, there is another tool set that will allow you to do this the yeah. same way as you currently do, right? True, 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 exactly. So again, let me see the future proof for us. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Well, we don't have any more questions. Great. I think we're pretty much bang on um, at 45 minutes. Um, Basim, thank you very much for, for joining. It really was a pleasure. Um, it was great talking to you. Um, and uh, I hope for everyone in the audience, it was, um, it was beneficial. Um, I hope everyone had a, had a good time. And uh, thanks, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, I would see you soon. Pleasure is mine being with you. Thank you, Mark. Very happy to share our story as uh, I really like Ron Kassel for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, Basim. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Thank you.